Hello YouTubers, it is of course I, Trollface the Man, and welcome back to another long overdue video. Yes, I know it's been a while, once again, a lot of things going on, including an ear infection in my right ear that has now rendered me completely deaf in that ear. I do not have a clue if my hearing will ever come back. I'm going to have to go to the doctor and see um, what the specialist might say. But today's video is going to be about this very interesting bulb I see. Uh, it was a $60 bulb, which is quite expensive, but if I have use out of it, then it will pay itself back quite easily. Uh, it is supposedly a 500 watt replacement bulb, uh, an LED bulb, but what makes it really unique is it's 10,000 lumens, so that's fairly bright, um, but also that it Claims it's able to produce three different color temperatures. Oh, maybe I should. There we go. Soft white, cool white, and then daylight. The color temperatures are determined by a switch on here that you can just flip back and forth. You're supposed to flip it, then turn it on, um, but. Eh, seems like a little bit too much work. I put an adapter on the end of it, uh, just so way I can plug it into a normal extension cord. And I wanted to not only see how the color temperatures look in general, but I wanted to use a spectroscope uh, to take a look at it and see how the color quality is, whether or not the um, color is going to be High quality, low quality, or whatever. I actually use these for my studio lights. Um, not this one specifically, but this is my other one right here. And I believe this one is supposed to be 15,000 lumens. So 15,000 lumens, 10,000 lumens. You can see quite a difference with the chip count um, with this 15,000 lumen compared to this 10,000 lumen one. But it seems like that these chips are being ran at a higher wattage. Um, compared to uh, this one, which has more chips running at a lower wattage, based off of what I am uh, seeing and perceiving, uh, assuming that this actually is a full 10,000 lumens like it claims. I also have a plug in the back of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to use a piece of paper to reflect the light and then to view it under this spectroscope. Now, in order for you guys to see it, uh, I have, this is a very interesting thing, it's a universal telescope adapter for a phone. You can like move this up and down and stuff and then you just kinda, I have to brighten this a bit for you guys to see it. It's the darkness. You can just pop this in like so and then you twist it and it, locks it in place. So if I take my phone and I unlock it, what we now can see is, uh, whoops, I put that on backwards actually. Uh, kind of dumb. Okay, now what we can actually see is through the spectroscope's uh, view. Um, and if I were to do something like shine a light through here, you can see It's not going to do great because it's so close, but they're kind of the rainbows on the edge forming there, which will show me the uh, color spectra. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take pictures of the lights and I will put them up for you to see yourself. Um, first, I'm going to have to crank down this way down. Um, I will include a link, Amazon link, for the spectroscope tubes if I can find them, uh, uh, the universal adapter, and this bulb maybe if I can find them. Buying anything using the links helps support the channel. Um, first thing I want to kind of do is see what wattage this has at the different color temperatures. I'm going to plug in this watt meter and then I'm going to plug in this light. Right now it is set to uh, Daylight. Also, because these are very bright, I'm going to put on not only one, but two pairs of sunglasses. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, geez, that is bright. Let me try and crank that down a bit. Tame it a tad. Are you gonna be able to see the meter though? Can you see that meter? I'm not sure. Right now, this this claims that it's a. Uh, geez. I can't hardly see the camera because of this. Okay, you can see that. Uh, this claims to be a 90 watt bulb at 10,000 lumens. Right now it is set to daylight, so only, you can't see it, but I'll, I'll show you later. Only one of the strips is lighting, being the, maybe I can show it, being, no, well, I mean, you can kind of see it. I'll show it better later. Um, only one half of the LED chips that are on there are actually lighting, being the daylight ones. And this is how it achieves the effect that uh, you have very cool white LEDs and then you have very warm white LEDs. Oops. And that uh, one half lights. So for daylight, the cool white ones light. And then for warm white, the warm white ones light. And then for the soft white, both of them light just a little tiny bit. So daylight, warm white, or excuse me, daylight, soft white, warm white. And you can see it actually does drastically change the color pitch. Uh, looking at this now, this is only 74 watts being the soft white, and then the warm white is 77 watts. Ooh, you know, that is a pretty far cry from the supposed 90 watts consumed. That's a little bit disappointing because this is more an 80 watt to 75 watt bulb, not a 90 watt bulb. Let's take a look at my other bulb right here, which claims a 100 watt usage, and I do believe is supposed to be 15,000 lumens. Funny enough, it does not say on the bulb. Um, yeah, let's take a look at this one. There is a slight whine from it, but you can see this one claims 100 watts and it consumes 106 watts. I'm kind of having a hard time telling. The other bulb seems like it might be brighter, actually, but I've used this one for a year and a half now and slowly the LEDs will kind of die and dim out. Uh, they usually don't just suddenly fail, they usually die slowly. Um, all right, well, let's actually take a look at this with the spectroscope and see how it looks. And what I'm going to do is because this is so bright and you can't really see what's going on is I'm going to use something called a neutral density filter. Uh, I'm going to use something that's basically sunglasses for your camera. It is a filter that is tinted. And I'm just going to that right on. And then I'm going to try and crank this all the way down so you can hopefully see the individual LEDs. Um, this is the warm white, soft white, cool white. So you can see how it just kind of mixes them in order to achieve these effects. I think that uh, even regardless of the false advertising that I might have use for this so long as the color quality is good. Let's find that out though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm bouncing the light off this white piece of paper and then I'm going to use my phone with the spectroscope tube. I know it just looks like a silhouette right now, but uh, I'm going to use my phone with the spectroscope tube to uh, take a look at this and then I will manually take a look using my own spectroscope. Um, but I just want you to be able to see and what we want to find is we want to find just a very smooth like rainbowy transition between the different colors and not any like harsh just um, harsh like very overrepresented color lines. Uh, okay so I got that's warm white. This is the soft white. And then the cool white. I'm 
and take a look with my own spectroscope real quick to see. The truth of the matter is that when I'm looking at this, it actually has a really good color. Um, it actually has a really good uh, color spread here. I'm seeing a very sort of smooth rainbow, not a whole lot of overrepresentation in any spectrums. Uh, it just actually looks fairly good. For comparison, let's take a look at my other lights. So plug that. This one's a bit of a danger because there's definitely potential for live metal on the sides of it, like the wires at the top and stuff. So this one's very bright too. Um, let me take a picture with my phone real quick. You know, it's one thing I've realized doing videos for so many years, things never go as smoothly as you hope they would. This one definitely looks brighter, which I would hope. Um, so what I'm actually seeing in this one is, is that the blue spectrum, the light blue spectrum is kind of underrepresented. That it is a little bit on the dollar side, but once again, not too bad, it has a very smooth-ish spread and uh, looks fairly decent. Once again though, uh, this is actually, it's claimed wattage while the other one is not. Mm. I will show you an example of a bad bulb in terms of color quality and that is one of these CFLs. These things have always been more or less garbage. And I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to use my phone to take a picture of the Spectra. Oh yeah, that is no bueno. Well, you can see with the CFLs, and this is one of the reasons why they always look like garbage. Uh, CFL stands for compact fluorescent, by the way. And these have always had uh, an issue with making people just look really bad under them, just like the standard fluorescent tubes. And the reason is, is because, like you can see in the image, there is very sharp spikes in certain color ranges and not sort of a smooth rainbow like natural daylight might have. And that just causes like this weird color effect with your skin. A lot of times because it's overrepresented in like the green spectrum, it makes your skin have like that greenish hue that's just not very, Good, and that's one of the reasons why you'd actually use a purple filter, um, a purple color filter, uh, to kind of remove that greenish effect uh, from your skin with old photography. But yeah, so is this light worth sixty bucks? That is kind of uh, an eye of the beholder thing. I think it's pretty BS that. It's not the claimed wattage that it says, which means that it likely isn't the claimed, um, isn't the claimed brightness that it, it, it supposedly is. That's just for me partially flicking the switch. But in general, it does have its uses. I mean, I can definitely have times where I could use a very warm white color or a soft white or just the daylight. The daylight would match my normal studio lighting more because I like having a daylight and then color correcting it in post if I really wanted to. But sometimes you need like a very warm white mix effect for various things. Um, so I don't know. I think it could potentially be worth it um, for those that decide that they would want that. But it's going to be, once again, up to the eyes of the beholder. I am not happy about the wattage not matching up, though. Feels pretty scummy. In general, though, I will try and... If I can find this, I'll put an Amazon link in the description below. I'll also put an Amazon link for the neutral density filters for 
the spectroscope that I was using for the spectroscope tube and the adapter. And if I can find this light, I'll put one down there for it too. I definitely do recommend this one. I got this one on sale for like 40 bucks and it's been a, a great boon to my light levels when it comes to my studio and allowing me to uh, record better quality videos in general. And remember, anything you buy using those links supports the channel. It's actually one of the main ways that I can basically make up expenses like purchasing stuff like this uh, anymore because I make almost nothing off of YouTube ad, red, ad revenue. Uh, purchases on Amazon actually are most of my money made from small videos like this. So it is appreciated if you so decide that you want any of those things. I thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to hit that like button. Thank you guys all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. My God, I'm rusty at videos.